there's data coming through faster than I can encode it. I've already lost two processors. They keep burning out. Please, I love you. You need to get out of there. It's not safe. I need you, Steven. I need you here. I can open the gate manually. I can let you in. It's too dangerous. You don't understand what's happening. No, here. you don't understand. We can solve this. We can find a way. I just need more power. I need to amplify the signal, and I can't do it on my own. You saw the opportunity. You ran the numbers, remember? We're responsible for all this. You and me. <laughs> it's not just you and me anymore, though, is it? Jesus, Kate, you're trying to talk to it, aren't you? Kate, you can't. Steven, I have to. It's completely dead. It won't start. It's only a short walk to the camp. I think we should split up. You go and fetch Rachel. I'll go back to the village and find Evie. I don't think we should split up. I don't want to either, Charlie, but we've got to. I'll meet you back at my house later on, okay? We can talk properly then. Why won't you tell me what happened? No, no, actually, you should stay at the camp tonight. Come and find me in the morning. Bring Rachel back. She's going to need her mother. Meg. Just take care of her. Meg! What is it, Charlie? Nothing. Just be careful. I will, I promise. You as well. I'll see you later on. Why on earth are you there? Why aren't you calling from home? It's hard to explain. I'm having to move around to follow it. When it finds a suitable host, it begins to amplify... Sorry, I'm not making much sense. They're talking about flu and a quarantine on the radio, but this... I know you're not that kind of doctor, but it all just sounds really weird. We don't know exactly what it is yet, but it's got something to do with the other night. Stephen, your face, the mark, do you think you're infected? It's not a disease, is it? It's something else. There's something Kate said about patterns. I can't grasp it clearly yet. Okay, come over. Have some lunch. We can talk properly. Have you spoken with Kate? Well, she's locked herself in the observatory. She's buried in the data. But it's already out here in the world. I need to see how it adapts. How what adapts? Stephen, try to explain. Thumbs up. Lizzie, listen. Be ready. I need to go. It's moving again. I'll call you later. Do you think she'll like it? It's in an awful state, Stephen. I don't It'll think It'll be she'll... an adventure. 
It'll mean putting down roots here, maybe a family. Are you sure she wants children? What, to stay here? It's not her place, you know. Don't start that again, please. I mean, she's ambitious, love, and she's well older. She's not gonna wanna stay cooped up at home looking after the kids. Is that how you felt about me? Oh, stop it, Stephen. That's not what I meant, and you know it. I'm just saying you should make a choice. If it's a family you want, well, you know how much Lizzie wants a family. Jesus, Mum, I didn't come here for marriage guidance. I just asked what you thought about a fucking house. Stephen Appleton language! Sorry, it's just that you have to understand. Kate is the most brilliant, extraordinary, wonderful person I've ever known. She's... she's like no one else. You know the protocol. That doesn't matter now. It's figured out how to circumvent the telecommunications blackout. What? I didn't think it could. Kate understood. She saw how adaptable it was. How smart. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're talking about it like it's alive. You have to assume that everyone here is infected. We can't know We're that. We're infected. It's killed all the birds, and now it's in us. It's trying to leave the valley any way it can. The quarantine is not enough. You've got to remove the carriers. You've got to cut off his energy source. It's food. I've already told you, Stephen, I'm not going to order you an airstrike. You have to. Now it knows we're onto it. It's going to keep on spreading as fast as it can. The quarantine and blackout will hold it in check. They've cut all of the phones out of the valley, so it's only you communicating Aren't out you're now. you're listening? It's figured out ways around it. Radio waves, something. All of the lines are cut, but the phones are working anyway. You've done all the right things, but it's not enough. You've got to stop it before it adapts again. Stephen, my my family, my, my wife and kids. You know perfectly well what you've got to do. I can't do it. Don't ask me to do it. You're asking me to sign their death warrant, my own family. Damn it, don't you think I'm aware of that? I'll still be here when you drop the fucking stuff. Don't you lecture me about sacrifice, you spineless little shit. If you're so full of ideas, you come here and try dealing with it. Tell them the time when we had a choice is over.
Tell them to do it. You've got to do it now. You look well. I don't, but thank you. You do. How are you settling in? Nothing changes around here. I mean, it's great to be back. It still feels like home, I suppose, in a funny kind of way. It's been a long time, Stephen. Last time you saw me, I could still walk properly. You look pretty good to me. Stop it. For what it's worth, I'm sorry about how things worked out. Or didn't. Or didn't, right. Do you think you made a mistake leaving? My mum tells me it's never too late to change things, to put things right. Funny. It's just what she said to me the other day. I have been wondering oh, what she meant God, by that. That's <laughs> embarrassing. Sorry. Uh, maybe I should go. Why? Stephen, we're both married. I don't think this is a good idea. What isn't? We're just two old friends having a drink, that's all. Darling Stephen, I don't know if you'll ever listen to this. Uh, maybe you've decided to stay with Kate, and I, I can't blame you for that. But I can't wait for you either. I've got to think about the baby. And, well, <laughs> I should have left a long time ago. I've run out of excuses for not leaving now. But I do love you, Stephen. And I hope you find peace one way or another. Oh, there's planes coming.
Have they closed the tunnel? There's no trains. I've put up a sign. The tunnel, Howard. Is it closed? I think so. I don't like it. It's not right at all. Stop whining. It doesn't help anyone. Did you know you're bleeding? Oh, it's this headache. It's just killing me. I haven't had a nosebleed like this since I was a kid. But you've not been to the village? No, I've been here the last couple of days or at home. I've only spoken to Clive at the EMC on the phone. Well, tried to anyway, but with all the crossed lines... It... But no direct contact with any other people? No, no one. What are you talking about? What's going on? It's the pattern. It's adapted again. It doesn't need direct contact to transfer. It's using the phones! What do you mean, direct contact? Stephen! Is there anyone there? Can anyone hear me? Clive. Clive, it's Stephen Appleton. Are you there? Can you hear me? Over. Come on, Clive. Where are you? Damn it. Kate. Kate, it's Stephen. Come in, Tau 6. Kate, are you there? Kate. Anyone? Hello? Can anyone hear me? This is Dr. Stephen Appleton, broadcasting from within the quarantine zone. Can anybody hear me? Oh, oh God, no. No. You're a daft old bird walking all the way out here for it. You know Charlie would have dropped it off. What? And have that stinking great lorry of his poisoning my birds? He shouldn't be driving it on these lanes. It's a hazard. I think he was hoping he could have a word with you about Frank. There's nothing to say. Oh, listen, Wendy, they might all be scared of you, but that's not going to work with me. You're 68 years old. Grow up. Talk to Frank. How dare you speak to me like that? Give me my bird feeder right now. Promise me you'll drop by and see your brother. Megan Holloway, give Not me... a chance. Promise me. It's for your own good, and you know it. You are a shamelessly manipulative and difficult woman. It's no wonder Charlie adores you so much. No wonder I do what? No wonder you never finish what you start. I thought I told you to check the incoming stock orders. Wendy, one bird feeder for you. I'll tell Frank you'll stop by. Oh! Charlie, stop mooning around and stick the kettle on. Make yourself useful. Appleton! What are you doing here? You thieving bastard! I knew it was you! Listen, take everything you need. But then you have to leave. 
You don't understand. You can't be near me. Painting these stupid little pictures. Stealing food. You always were a little prick. Please, every second we're in proximity makes it worse. I'm a primary conduit. You're a fucking disgrace. Come in. Sam, don't touch me. Get off. What the hell is going on? Come in here. Lord. Jesus, Get out over Sam. Us. Thinking you're so much better Sam, than the rest of us. No physical you contact. You and your stupid fucking missus. Sam, stop she's it. better than any of you. <laughs> Station Master's house, Howard Lantham speaking. Howard, it's Clive, Clive Smith. I need you to listen to me and not ask questions or interrupt. Can you do that? Yeah, I can. But why are you calling? The Emergency Measures Committee is imposing a quarantine around the valley. We've got an influenza outbreak in the village. We're suspending rail services, and we're also going to be shutting down the roads for a bit. Uh, you're going to be dealing with some anxious people, Howard, so you need to explain it's all under control, and we'll be back to normal in a few days. All right? Open up the emergency store. There's posters and boards, along with a bunch of stuff that hasn't been used since the war. Grab anything you think might be useful. I need you to close up any unoccupied buildings, put posters up, that sort of thing. Make sure everything is all squared away in shipshape. You are a military man, I'm sure you understand that. Everyone doing their bit, following their orders. All right? All right? I think. Good man. I knew we could count on you. Ah, Jesus, my ears. Jesus, man, what do you dent your face? It's nothing. You collecting feed? Looks like the supplies haven't been coming in. Huh? Again? The phones are all strange. I can't pinpoint the logic of transmission. You what? What are you doing with that paint? Means the EMC are actually moving at the proper speed. Listen, Frank, have you uh, heard anything on the radio about a flu outbreak? Doesn't seem much like flu to me. They're shutting down access to the valley to try and isolate it. No, something about the phones. I can't put my finger on it quite yet. What are you talking about? 
Hey, I'm still talking to you. Where are you going? all over the valley. Don't you get that? This isn't some abstract thing. Whatever came down into the tower has got out. They've quarantined the whole valley. It's right here in the observatory. It's out in the world. It's adapting and spreading. Do you understand? No, we can't turn it away. It's come too far. Okay, people are disappearing. Shut it down now. No. If you won't help me, I'll do it on my own. I'm gonna route all the power back through Tower 6. Kate, wait, wait. Oh, it's trying to break through again. Okay. Wait! What do you want me to say? You knew what you were getting into. Really? Well, I'm sorry we don't measure up to your exacting standards, Dr. Collins. Maybe you just need to give us ordinary humans a break. What? Ordinary humans like Lizzie Graves? Did you really think that I wouldn't find out? Frank told me. Or did you forget there's one person in this shithole who actually talks to me? Kate, it was just a dream. Don't bother, Stephen! For Christ's sake. Kate, slow down. You were engaged to her, Stephen. You nearly married oh, her. Oh, come on, it was just a drink. Then why the hell did you lie to me about because it? Because I knew you'd be mad and then it would end up in a row. You wanted to focus on the event tonight. Oh, so you were actually doing me a favor. Wow, I guess I just forgot to say thank you. Do not treat me like I'm an idiot. You're overreacting. I know, I know you're stressed. Just... Don't. You keep away from me tonight. I'm not gonna let you ruin this for me. Kate. Kate, come on, this is crazy.
When I was a kid, my dad found a fox. It had been hit by a car and couldn't walk anymore. 